these people were almost too smart. They yeah. had always been enormously successful, and they mm -hmm. couldn't fathom how they could be such failures. Well, that's, that's the title of the book, The Brilliant Disaster, and it's, it's ironic, of course, and it's oxymoronic, but the, the brilliant part is the men who did it. Yeah. They were the best and the brightest, and, uh, you know, you, he, a number of Rhodes Scholars, Dean Rusk, the Secretary of State, had been a Rhodes Scholar. There were many Rhodes Scholars. There was um, McGeorge Bundy, who'd been uh, the Dean of Arts and Sciences at Harvard at the age of 34. He was just, I think, 42 at the time. Robert McNamara, Secretary of Defense, had been the president of Ford Motor Company at the age of 40. All of these guys were really smart and really successful and had never really failed at anything. And I do think you have to attribute part of what happened to the fact that when they got in a room together and they looked around at each other, they saw a lot of brilliant people who they respected and then they, in themselves they saw people who did not fail and they forgot about Mor Murphy's Law. Uh, you know, things go wrong. Yeah. So I jokingly yeah. say it, it might have helped to have a few less brilliant people, regular people, uh, you know, in presidential administrations. Uh, people like me, for instance, I'm available. People to point out that things don't always go the way you plan them. And that would have been a good thing for, yeah. for people and to think about. And people who ask what are thought to be dumb questions. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the thing. And nobody, nobody wanted to embarrass themselves by asking those dumb questions. Right. A and that, I take it, is part of why you say that groupthink took over. Yes, uh, groupthink did. Uh, there were a number of factors, I think, that, that led to this bad decision. You have to forgive them a little bit because this did occur only three months into the beginning of the administration. And a lot of these, they were still finding their way to the men's room. I mean, they hadn't gotten their sea legs yet. <laughs> and then they also were, they didn't want to embarrass themselves yeah. in front of the president so, yeah. or in front of each other. Uh, but groupthink is the famous book by Irving Janis written in 1972 that was inspired by the Bay of Pigs. Okay. He was asking himself, how could it be that all these smart people could make such a bad decision? And he came up with a theory that when you get people of similar backgrounds into yeah. a room, yeah. there is a, 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 an impetus to agree with each other. Uh, nobody wants to stand out, particularly when, I mean, these guys really did come from, they had similar resumes. A lot of them had gone to East Coast boarding schools, Ivy League colleges. They knew each other socially. Uh, they had reason to agree with each other and to assume the other guy was right. Uh, and uh, the, the one person, I mean, there's the, the Irving Janice's book really refers to one meeting particularly that happened just over 10 days before the invasion, April 4th of 1961, when you had all these guys in a conference room in the State Department. Uh, and they go, and Kennedy goes around and asks them what they think, and they all vote for it. Now later they all say they had major reservations about it, but they didn't voice them at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one guy who did voice reservations was an outsider. It was a senator who really shouldn't have been at that meeting, Senator William Fulbright. Right. Kennedy had invited him in knowing that he had problems with the plan. And he got up and gave this rousing speech about how this is a terrible idea, un-American, um, impractical, wrong in, in every respect. And he became what j the foil that everybody sort of ganged up on. Yeah. And as Janice wrote, it really only confirmed what people believed. You know, when you have one person that you can say, oh, he's the, he's the outsider, uh, those who already are prone to agree with each other, it, it, it sort of uh, solidifies their belief in their own opinion. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.